So this is the mount that I've been using to record my, um, well, what GoPro calls time warp videos with the GoPro Hero 7. Um, so it just mounts on the windscreen. Now, theoretically, I could mount this to the side of the car uh, as well. And, um, but only if I'm prepared to risk the whole thing falling off onto the road as I'm driving along. And I've got to say at the moment, I'm not because a couple of times it has fallen off the windscreen uh, into the uh, um, into the passenger uh, compartment uh, of the car. So I think for that reason, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to risk that unless I first had a means to um, kind of double secure it that if the suction cup failed, uh, that it would still um, not fall onto the road because I don't want to lose my GoPro. Uh, well, uh, this is Sod's Law, really, and um, Murphy's Law, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just arrived, been nice weather all the way here. Uh, quite dramatic skies, nice bit of structure to the clouds <laughs> have arrived, and suddenly I'm in nasty mizzle and uh, it's got quite a bit colder. So I think I'm gonna uh, put an extra layer on because uh, I don't think, I think the sun's gone away um, and I'm gonna uh, have lunch in the car. I was gonna have a nice little picnic sat out here uh, near the car park, um, but I think I'm gonna have to eat in the car uh, and wait for this, uh, this bit of rain to pass over. I'm looking at the dark sky app and uh, this is really useful for just seeing how long the rain is going to last, how long I need to sit here in the car. And so I can grab this slide app and I can just, right, it's about where we are now in the middle of this little outbreak of rain. It'll soon pass, but another band is coming in behind it. It looks like it might stay quite clear after that. Uh, so I'm going to sit it out for about half an hour or so. And, uh, and just see see what happens once that weather band passes, and that way hopefully I'll have a dry ascent up to my pitch on Roost Tour. That's where we're headed. Okay, we're on our way. This way, the sky looks rather rather inviting, doesn't it? But the other way, I can see that those sh promised showers are slowly making their way in. And uh, so I think I've probably got about 25 minutes, maybe 30 before the showers hit me. So I'm gonna make a little bit of uh, progress up the hill now and uh, see if I can get some of the climbing in before I have to put a coat on. And which will get me all hot and bothered. Anyway, here we go. See you in a minute. If you've watched my channel before, you might recognize this tree. And uh, because it's a bit of a lone one in the landscape here and I have photographed, I've used it to frame a photograph before of a tour the other side of it. I noticed in the car park, there was a small branch uh, on the ground, which is unusual here because as I sweep around the landscape, you'll notice there are very few trees like this. <laughs> this is the only one on this hill, in fact. And, uh, and it looks like someone's probably broken it off there, that branch and carried it down to the car park, which is a real shame because look at this tree. <sighs> This tree is just beautiful. It's covered in these mosses that, and lichen that have been growing here for, I don't know, decades probably. And uh, it's such a shame that someone would vandalize it in that way. This is a, it's a small thing, but it's a scar and it's an unnecessary scar. Anyway, I'm gonna include this tree in a little time-lapse of the weather coming in. Well, it looks like the worst of the, uh, of the shower, in fact, is passing 
to the south of me. And uh, so I may not get as wet as I thought I was. Uh, just a little bit of drizzle, really. Like there's just the odd little speck of rain in the air. And uh, there's a possibility of another little shower uh, in a few minutes time, but uh, they seem to be kind of evaporating a little bit. Uh, as they pass, uh, as they reach this point. So, I don't know, I might strike lucky. Uh, I think I'm gonna take my coat off and uh, risk the weather. If you're new to my channel, the one person that is new to my channel, uh, this month. Welcome! And uh, those of you who've seen me before will know I love to talk about clitter fields. As I'm standing in one, uh, if you don't know what one of those is, this is where all the debris ends up that has been broken down, the rocks that's been broken down from these tours over millennia. And we end up with these jagged uh, hunks and chunks of debris and rock litter, if you like. The litter of millennia of erosion on the tours. And uh, it's tricky stuff to walk through, so it's always best to try and find a bit of a path if you can. And, Sometimes those are just animal paths uh, that you're following. Sometimes it's something a bit more well-worn. And the one I'm on at the moment is, yeah, somewhere between the two. It started as a human path. I think it's becoming more of an animal, an animal path. So you have to kind of be careful of your footing and that's a good reason for carrying this walking pole with me. Okay, on we go. This is always an impressive view when you get up here and in the distance uh, you can see Great Staple, sorry, Great, yeah, Great Staple Tour and uh, a place I've been to a number of times. Today we're going to walk through it and beyond to Roos Tour. <sighs> and it's pretty blowy up here. Looking over that way towards Princetown and then back down the hill and back over towards Plymouth. Gorgeous. Now that is fortunate because I was about to uh, bemoan the fact that I had lost this little fella and I was going to go walking down the hill to see if I could find it again. And uh, fortunately, it was just feet from where I'd stopped. Because uh, this is a problem with this Rode microphone. The, uh, the muffler, the windshield clips on here. And um, let me just take it off. Sorry if there's more noise. Um, so it clips onto here and a number of people have complained that it comes off very easily and indeed it does appear to do that and uh, I bought this particular pack second hand the original would come with two uh, one spare uh, which is clearly necessary mine came with a single one someone obviously already lost one and uh, so I'm going to reattach it and just try and take a little bit more care to make sure I don't lose it I may have to hold it on with an elastic band or something
Well, here I am at Rustor, or Rustor, and uh, it's really clouded over. And over in that direction, we're looking back towards Great Staple Tor. Very recognizable it is. Just over its right hand shoulder is the Tamar Bridge. So I'm going to try and find somewhere to pitch my tent and uh, just have a little bit of downtime, maybe a hot drink. And I found this great little sheltered spot on uh, Rustor. I'm right out of the wind. The last time I was in this neck of the uh, the non-woods of the moors, um, I was over that way at Great Staple Tor, and I made the mistake of thinking that I could camp on the windward side of the tour. Uh, well, that wasn't entirely correct actually, the wind did change a bit during the night, but I thought it was sheltered enough, but it wasn't. And then uh, a gale really blew up, and I thought it was going to rip my tent to pieces. And uh, so I learnt my lesson that night, and uh, tonight I'm hoping I'll get a little bit of sleep here. It's not the most level pitch in the world, but it's definitely sheltered, it's definitely out of the wind, and I'm surrounded on almost all sides by, um, by these walls made by the, uh, by the rocks of the Tor. It's like a little kind of bowl, uh, a small bowl about 10 metres around uh, on one side of the Tor. So I'm going to have a cup of, uh, a cup of coffee, I think before I set up tent. It's a little bit early to set up. It's 25 past six. I'm not in a mad rush to get it set up for sunset shoots because I think it's just going to gradually go to a duller and duller grey because looking at the sky I'll be very lucky to get a break in the clouds on the horizon. Don't think that's going to happen. But I'm just here to relax tonight and uh, I'm just looking forward to a quiet, quiet, peaceful night out in the wilds. I'll show you around. So here is the, uh, the little bowl that I'm in. So this is looking roughly northward. And as I pan around, you'll see that other than here, where it really falls away, uh, I'm surrounded by rocks. So this is really going to keep me out of the wind tonight, which is going to be great. And I can still see Great Lynx Tour over there. So if I did have a little bit during the night, a little break during the night where uh, we did get some clear sky, um, then these surrounding rocks will make quite a nice sort of frame for the Milky Way. But you know, that's just going to be a bonus. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, we have got some interesting sky going on over there. Might be worth breaking the camera out for. Well, I can't give up completely. So uh, I think I'm going to have to just try and find the right vantage point and just set up the camera just in case. It's a lovely little chink of light in the distance over there. So if, that, if that light patch over there, uh, we're just a bit further north. Um, that sunset, or a similar patch developed, 
we could have a great sunset. We just really light up the underside of these clouds here. It is tantalizingly close to being very promising. Well, things are waking up in the sky and we've got some nice colors on the ground as well. So I'm running around like a mad thing at the minute, trying to find a composition. I'll get back to you soon. Well, we're just minutes away from sunset now and that was all a bit, uh, a bit bonkers, really. <laughs> it's a very, this is what you call a dynamic uh, landscape, really, because uh, the light is just changing in so many places and so rapidly, uh, lighting up different parts of this landscape. Uh, so a moment ago, uh, what you can see here, um, these little tours just up in the distance here, uh, they were just bathed in a lovely kind of orange glow because the, um, the grass is just, the moorland is just starting to turn. It's that time of year where you're starting to get some more sort of autumn-y, fawny type colours rather than just just nasty everything green and um, and so it just was lighting it up absolutely beautifully and I think I think I might have captured that quite quite nicely um, but there we go I think I'm gonna, gonna call it a day now um, there are also some absolutely mad um, images going the other looking at the other direction where the Sun was actually setting and some very very uh, tight uh, tightly defined sunbeams which uh, I had to bracket massively because I was shooting really straight into the straight into the light and um, uh, the the Sony does not have the dynamic range that the uh, that the old Nikon D850 uh, had so you know there were one or two shots there where I had to bracket um, you know five different levels with you know ranging from probably through about seven or eight stops of light so I don't really know how well they'll have done um, I didn't really have a chance to absolutely anchor everything down because I was just running around crazy uh, but I really enjoyed that and uh, and I'll be surprised if I haven't got something quite nice out of one or two uh, of those uh, one or two of those pieces so if I do I will show them if I don't uh, well I won't really uh, but hopefully I'll have something to show you Well, morning folks, that was a pretty uneventful night. And the morning could be uneventful, but well, we've got this <laughs> potential here. We've got this potential of a sunrise that every so often, um, that little mist at the top of uh, Mist Tor, funnily enough, uh, over there just gets beautifully backlit uh, by the sun but it's just momentary glimpses. And uh, I have tried to capture one or two, but uh, I wasn't really in the right place, I don't think, uh, compositionally, because uh, it was really quite unexpected. So I'm gonna stick around here just in case we, it happens again, uh, because it's just constantly changing. So uh, stick around, we'll see what happens. So we are about, uh, <coughs> what, 20 minutes nearly after dawn. Um, and it's kind of all blended into this dull gray. So nothing really further happened uh, to speak of uh, photographically. So I think I'm gonna have some breakfast. The night was quiet um, other than um, driving rain, 
belting winds <laughs> and not a lot of sleep um, as usual. So uh, the sky stayed grey all night, overcast, so there wasn't even a peep of uh, stars at all. So no star shots, I'm afraid. I keep bringing out all my Nikon gear, weighs half a tonne, uh, and I still haven't had an opportunity to use it. Uh, I'm just going to go into a slightly uh, uh, less windy spot here, windbreak. Uh. Right. Okay, hopefully there won't be so much uh, <coughs> wind noise now. Which brings me to the next thing I wanted to say about this particular trip. Uh, because something that has been really, really uh, good has been uh, this little Rode mic system that I'm wearing. And uh, in a minute I'll show you a little uh, view of it uh, using the other camera. Uh, but yeah, it's been, um, it's been excellent, except for the fact that this uh, wind muff does keep coming off I've lost it and found it again uh, two or three times uh, just in this one trip so it does need to be more secure and I know that road are uh, looking into that um, at the moment may have a solution but it's just not out and about to the public yet um, but sooner or later I am going to lose this uh, this little wind muff but what's great is I'm no longer bound to the camera so what I was using before uh, was just uh, a wired mic, uh, lapel mic, and um, which really restricted me in terms of um, you know just my ability to just get on with stuff. Because uh, I was constantly having to disconnect uh, and reconnect it and stay within uh, basically within arm's length. Uh, so this is going to free me up to do uh, more creative things, um, particularly in terms of sound. So yeah, very, very pleased uh, with this. The sound quality appears to be good. And despite the fact that it keeps falling off um, uh, and losing itself, uh, it actually is a really good um, windshield. So uh, I mean, I've been uh, talking to camera in some really very windy conditions and it seems to be handling it. Uh, I do have other mic systems. Uh, I've got the Rode Video Mic Go, I think it's called. And um, so that's quite a small passive microphone with a great big huge wind muff, but it hasn't been that effective, uh, or certainly not as effective as this one at keeping the wind out. Uh, and then I've also got the, um, the Roadlink, the larger Roadlink wireless system. And um, I've stopped using that really for trips like this uh, because it's just too big and bulky. So there's a great big transmitter and uh, it's about this kind of size and a great big receiver uh, as well. And although you get better battery life uh, from, those, uh, from those systems, uh, I'm just wanting to try and um, make what I'm carrying around a little bit more compact and uh, a little bit less in your face uh, for other people that I come across uh, as well. So really liking this Roadlink mic system. It uh, has worked out very well. Okay, so I think that's about it now. Um, I might just do a little bit more B-roll uh, as I might make my way back to the car after breakfast. But it's time for uh, some porridge, I think. And uh, porridge and a nice cuppa. Uh, and then I'll wind my way back to the car. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I've got one or two decent pictures out of it. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed the camp. This has been a good place um, to stop. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, like and subscribe and share it and all the usual things. And I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.